All right, what's up, everybody? I'm doing a little bit of a breakdown on Pat Shermer's lack of situational awareness from time to time. So, yup, I'm going back to the Vikings game. Uh, this is a pretty big moment because the Vikings are have because yeah, Vikings have 18 points here. Giants have seven. Uh, Giants are on the five yard line. It's first and goal. If they could punch seven points in here, possibly eight, it becomes either a one score game or a three point game. So. A play that Eli Manning ran that he wasn't really successful with was play action rollouts to the right. Uh, particularly when Eli Manning ran those plays in the red zone, it wouldn't really be successful because you have the fact that when you're in the red zone, the field kind of shrinks as opposed to when you're out of the red zone. So the field shrinks, that kind of limits what you can do. Lo and behold, we kind of knew this was a, a weakness. I like how the Giants have an emphasis and they get right up to the line here. Evan Ingram looks like they're in 11 personnel. It becomes 12 personnel because you have two tight ends on the field. And lo and behold, Daniel Jones does not make a good play there. And he doesn't get rid of the ball. He takes a bad sack. It eventually winds up in three points and we've seen that from time to time this natural tendency to hold on the ball for a little too long so you're basically going to see everybody on the left side of the field they're going to be running crossing routes as well and the Vikings they basically they just make a good play on the ball all right next play next drive so the next drive, the Giants were driving and they wind up in the red zone. They did unfortunately allow a score to the Vikings, but lo and behold, what do we have here? What do we have here? We have the Giants running out of 21 personnel this time, Elijah Penny, John Hillman. And lo and behold, Pat Shermer, once again, in the red zone, is going to run a play-action rollout to the right on a first down. Doesn't really result in a very positive gain. Unfortunately, it does not. So we go fourth. Second and seven, Elijah Penny, who has shown a pretty surprising ability to actually run the ball pretty well. So I like this um, Sterling Shepard's going to go in motion. Elijah Penny's really going to rush up the middle, move the pile. And then really, look at how Remmers and Zeitler are working together here, and they move up to the secondary level. Okay, so that's second and seven. We got a five-yard gain, third and two in a multi-score game. There you go. With about 20 seconds left, 40 seconds left by the time this play is actually going to be over left in the third quarter, you need to know that it's four-down territory as a head coach. You need to know this. So if you're in four-down territory and Elijah Penny has been moving the pile pretty well, you absolutely 100% need to be running the ball on third down. Instead, we go out of the shotgun. I know and I understand the Vikings kind of stack the box. You have a favorable matchup with Evan Ingram outside one-on-one, -on -one, but also... You had some one-on-one -on -one matchups favorable. I'm even including looking in the middle of the field with Sterling Shepard right here, running who will be running a crossing route. But regardless, you can't have this play call. You can't have this play call on third down. You absolutely need to run the ball. So then fourth and two, you're unfortunately put in a uncomfortable situation back here. Um you know, the Vikings are going to be bringing blitz because now they know that you're not going to be passing the ball. So they're going to force Daniel Jones to be to make a good decision. And basically what you're going to have is with Saquon Barkley coming back, you're hopefully not going to be putting yourselves in uncomfortable situations like this. And hopefully on third and shorts, you can give the ball to Saquon Barkley, feel comfortable that he's going to get first downs and feel comfortable in sustaining consistent drives that keeps the defense off the field. Let's go over to the New England game the next week. All right, so we're in New England here. It's second and seven. The score is 28 to 14 with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Giants have the opportunity to make this a one-score game. Second and seven. Let's see what they do here. We're going to go towards this camera angle because I like this camera angle better because you can kind of see what Daniel Jones has to deal with. So Rhett Ellison goes in motion from left to right. I believe they're running out of 11 personnel, and he got, like, McCourty out here who's in, like, a money backer spot. He got linebackers put all over the place. He got another safety here. So this is a weird look for Daniel Jones. But I like this throw. You got to like the way that Daniel Jones delivers this ball, especially on a second and seven, to make it a third and manageable. Golden Tate. Golden Tate is able to find a spot in the zone. Sit there. Rest. Daniel Jones delivers a catchable ball. Let's jump to third down. Third and two, and this is exactly where you want Saquon Barkley on the field. You want Saquon Barkley, even if you're running out of the shotgun here, even if you're running a play out of the shotgun with 11 personnel, you feel comfortable that Saquon Barkley is going to be able to find an avenue. It's going to be able to find a hole. Now, again, four down territory. I don't blame Daniel Jones for making this throw towards the bottom of your screen where Darius Slayton is going to be. Also because nobody else is open, 
But also, if it's four down territory, why not try to make a big throw like this? But instead, Pat Shermer, it's going to be incomplete to Darius Slayton. There was nowhere else for Daniel Jones to really throw the ball. Instead, it's incomplete. The ball is punted. The Patriots wind up putting seven points on the board, and Pat Shermer is basically managing and coaching the game to not lose instead of actively trying to win. So, basically... I made this video because I feel like there's some situational, lack of situational awareness that Pat Shermer has been a uh, victim of these last two weeks against the Minnesota Vikings and against the New England Patriots. And hopefully with Engram returning, hopefully with Saquon Barkley returning, I hope basically that can be cured and the offense can sustain more sustainable and consistent drives. Peace.